Hey everybody and welcome back. If it's your first time here, welcome to this channel. I'm David Townsend. This is the Net Academy where we are learning networks together. And on this video, what I'm going to be going through, whilst wearing this incredibly green t-shirt, I know, yep, yeah, feel free to have a joke at my expense. Totally get it. But what I'm going to be going through is how to configure MSTP or multiple spanning tree protocol. Now in the previous video I went through what is MSTP, multiple spanning tree protocol, and how it really sort of like brings in all the benefits of RSTP or rapid spanning tree protocol, whilst at the same time addressing the limitations of VSTP or VLAN spanning tree protocol, or in the Cisco world, PVST or PVST plus, as those proprietary standards actually go. Now in this video, what I'm going to be configuring are specifically to MST or MSTP, those really specific acronyms such as the IST or the internal spanning tree, as well as the CST or the common spanning tree, as well as the CIST, which is the common and internal spanning tree. Now, if what I just said, those acronyms mean absolutely nothing to you and they go, way over your head please check out this link it's the video that I've done that explains the theory around MSTP such as its benefits why it came around what is the IST what is the CST what is the CIST what are boundary ports what is a master port so on and so forth I'm not going through the theory here because that's assuming that you know the theory but in this lab it's all about the configuration it's about configuring specifically an IST and then moving up to building that CST and then seeing what is that CIST root as well as those regional roots within that lab. But what I suggest first is let's actually just go through the lab in terms of the diagram just so you get a little bit of a feel as to okay these are these switches in this region and these switches are in that region and you understand the, the general setup before we go into the configuration. So th let's start there with the general lab setup. Okay, and here is the lab for this video. Looks a bit big, maybe a bit intimidating or scary. Promise you it's not. Let's just take it step by step and define what is this lab? What is this scary enterprise switching network that we're actually looking at? So what are we actually looking at? Well, first, there are two regions. As you may recall from the theory, when you talk about MST or MSTP, there's this concept of regions where all switches that have that same configuration, that same revision level, that same configuration name, and the same VLAN to instance mapping, they put out a specific hash, a hash number, whatever that is, and all switches that have that same hash value are in the same region. All switches that do not have that same hash value, whatever that is, will be in different regions. And that might be because that revision level is different, or maybe the configuration name is different, or maybe they've got different VLAN to instance mappings, or maybe a combination of all of them or some of them. But as you can see here, there's actually two different regions. There's region A, and then over here on the right hand side, there's region B. Now all the configuration I've already done on region B. So we're really gonna be focusing on region A, specifically switch one, and just for duplication, just to go over it again, switch two as well. So switch three is already configured. But in region A, there is switch one here, and switch two. We're going to be focusing on those, as I just said. Switch 3 is already done. And what you can also see for every single region is there is this IST, that is the internal spanning tree. That is where the default MSTI 0, where all non-active VLANs actually go, they advertise those BPDUs, those bridge protocol data units through the MSTI 0, the IST, to actually get that loop free topology. And that does that for MSTI 1 as well as MSTI 2, 3, 4, etc. etc. So as soon as you create MSTP, since you enter that command, whatever that command is for MSTP, by default you're going to have an IST because that's what creates that loop free topology for all MSTIs, all multiple spanning tree instances. But over here on region B, what you can 
actually see is, is that it has its own internal spanning tree, IST, within here. But you can already see, and as I said, the configuration is already done, what those port roles are actually in. So for switch 4 here, you can actually see this interface here, it's alternate, it's discarding, and that's to break that loop. Whereas for switch 5, we can see that this is a designated port and this is the root port, and we've got root ports here. And obviously that then indicates that this switch here, switch 6, is that root bridge for this region. So it's that regional root bridge. And how has that actually been elected? Well, of course, if you know the theory around STP, it's because the priority is zero. It's the lowest it can be. It's the best it ever will be. This has a priority of 4,000. This has a priority of 8,000. So naturally, switch 6 becomes that root bridge. But as I said, region B is already configured. If we come over and look at region a, you can see that there are no port roles. We don't have designated, root port, discarding or alternate. We're going to enter those in as we go through the configuration. So right now there's a little bit of a question mark as to who is going to be that root bridge and what are those port roles actually going to be for each one of these switches. But again, if you know the theory, you can look at the priority values here. So switch one has a priority of 4,000, switch two, as a priority of 12,000 and switch three as a priority of 8,000. So just easily there, we know that the root bridge for region A is going to be switch one here. But what you can also see for each region are these MSTIs, these multiple spanning tree instances. So MSTI zero basically contains all the non-active VLANs, i.e. All the, all the VLANs that are not in another instance. So for MSTI1, you can see that this has VLANs 2 to 10 in terms of the VLAN identifiers, the tags. MSTI2 has the VLAN tags of 11 to 20. And that's why if you look at MSTI0, it has VLAN 1. And then from 21 onwards, because VLANs 2 to 10 are in MSTI1 and VLANs 11 to 20 are in MSTI2. And if you look over here at region B's, MSTIs, all those different instances, you can see there is again that default, that MSTI zero, that IST, it's exactly the same thing. But with, there's now a little bit of a difference in terms of that VLAN to instance mapping. MSTI one also has VLANs two to 10, but MSTI two has VLANs 21 to 30. So therefore, that is why we've got region B and then region A, because region A is going to be outputting a hash calculation and let's just call it x and region b is going to be outputting a hash calculation let's just call it y and obviously the two don't match and hence they are in different regions and then right in the middle you've got this common spanning tree cst what is that that is basically linking region a across to region b it's providing a common spanning tree between different regions which have got a different configuration, i.e. revision level configuration name, VLAN to instance mapping, i.e. that hash calculation is just different. But this is one of the areas that we're going to get to eventually and when we've configured the CST and all you really have to do for that is actually define on the switches, so switch two, switch three, switch four and switch six, you have to define these interfaces to participate in the MSTP and then they're going to become the boundary ports, aren't they? They're going to become the boundary ports for the MSTI zero. And then all other instances will be a master port. We'll have a master port because that's just how the theory works. Again, please check out that link to go through this if you don't know what I'm actually referring to. But we're going to configure the CST after we've configured switch one and switch two. And a point on the configuration just very quickly, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be making a global configuration of MST, of multiple spanning tree. What do I mean by that? Well, within the Junos, on the Juniper switches, we can go into the MST protocol, but then you can actually define the MSTI one and the MSTI zero, or MSTI two, I should say, and for each one of these, you can actually define the bridge identifier in terms of the priority. So bridge identifier priority for instance one and a different priority for instance two. Now what that basically means is that 
we could have switch 3 as the root bridge for instance 1 but we could also then have switch 2 just for example as the root bridge for instance 2. So what that basically means is that we're going you could load balance that MSTP configuration across your network but I'm not going to do that because you're going to have one port as alternate for one instance but a designated port or maybe even a root port for another instance and as such I'm not going to be able to show these alternate and designated and, and root port values for region A it's just going to get way too messy so what I am actually doing is I'm not defining the bridge priorities in each one of those instances no I am just doing as I said from the global level within the MSTP protocol and you see this I am defining defining that bridge priority right at the top and with that all instances so MSTI 1 MSTI 2 3 4 if they were to exist they will all inherit that priority here and that's just going to make the configuration a lot more simple a to set up but also to show it on the display and once we've done that once we've got this up and running we can then as i said build the cst but then also see that cist root and also what is the cist regional root but that's right at the end now first what do we actually need to do to get region a up and running with mstp well the very, you don't have to do this in in this particular order but this is what i found useful First, you have to define the VLAN. So we need all these VLANs here and including VLAN 1 as well because it's the native VLAN. We need to create those VLANs first. So first, we're going to create those VLANs. Then we need to actually configure the trunk interfaces to have those VLANs. So we've got a trunk here and we've got a trunk there and we've got a trunk there. And just for simplicity, I'm trunking all of those VLANs that you see here from VLANs 1 to 20 onto those interfaces just keeping it nice keeping it simple and then we can actually go into the MSTP protocol to configure the bridge priority to identify and configure what interfaces are participating in MSTP define the instances define the VLAN to instance mapping define the configuration name define the bridge priority etc etc but that's really the, the first steps is one define the VLANs two assign the VLANs to a trunk on an interface and step three final step configure MSTP and then validate of course all of this is working but that's the lab that's the general setup and now let's go through steps one two three VLANs trunking MSTP and finally validation right at the end okay so let's actually get on with the configuration as i said this is all going to be in region a region b is already done and we're really going to focus on switch one and just a little bit more quickly as well as switch two just for a little bit of duplication so i'm on switch one let's go into the command line interface into configure mode what's the first thing that we need to do in this basic setup is let's go into edit vlans that's juno's talk for let's go into or well, let's move into the vlans area and if i just do show pipe display set this is very handy because you actually output the commands and you could copy this over if you wanted to copy and paste style but you can see we've got vlans 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and at the top 10 11 12 all the way down to 19 there's not vlan 20 here that's deliberate because i just want to show you how to configure how to create a vlan on junos I'm not going to do it 20 times because you will be so bored that you just stop watching i'm just going to show it this one so don't worry i'm not going to put you or me through that amount of pain <laughs> again i've already configured it as you can see and it is a little bit painful but let's do set actually do the right command set v20 that's just the name and let's do vlan id 20 and if i hit up twice show display set there we go that's it so the very first step is just creating your vlans now let's go top edit interfaces do we have any interfaces no there's only the management vlan that i use for remote shell on my secure crt but we need gigi 002 
to go to switch two and Giggy 3 to go to switch three and they need to be trunking all of those VLANs. So let's do set Giggy 002.0 or unit zero family ethernet switching. That's Junos talk for this is a layer two interface. Interface mode trunk and now we define the VLAN members. If I hit question mark, you can define a single one or you can do all right at the bottom or somewhere I thought there was all actually. Or you can actually do what we're gonna do is a, a bracket which allows you to define a range. So open square bracket, one hyphen 20, one to 20 being the range, space, close bracket. And now if I do a show, spell it correctly, and we can now see Giggy002 has been created. Now if I just hit up twice and scroll to the beginning, I'm gonna get rid of the Giggy002, replace that with Giggy003, and now do show. We've got our Giggy002 interface, and now our Giggy003 interface, and we are trunking all of these VLANs. That's it, that's the second step. And now let's go to the top, edit. I want to move into protocols MSTP, there's absolutely nothing here, but if I do set question mark, you could see all the different attributes that you can configure. So we're going to configure the configuration name. This needs to map. This needs to match on switch one, switch two, switch three. We also need to configure the revision level. That also has to match. And actually, this is optional. You don't have to configure it, but it's advised. But it is pretty much useless at the same time because it's really used for if you do a, a configuration update for MSTP, you're supposed to update the revision level number. But you've got to do that on all switches because if this doesn't match from switch to switch or on the free switches in region A, they're gonna be in different regions. And also the other area that has to match is the MSTI, the multiple spanning tree instance. We'll come on to that. But note as well the bridge priority. So we're gonna define the bridge priority of switch four to be four K or 4096. I like that in Junos because you don't have to define set bridge priority 4096. Junos is smart enough just to know if you say 4K, I know you mean 4096. So let's start there. Let's do bridge priority 4K. And now let's do the revision level. I'm just going to give it set revision level one. Set configuration name. I'm going to call this the, guess what? Net Academy. And let's do a quick show. And that's the first few configurations done. We've got the revision level, we've got the bridge priority of 4K, and we've got our configuration name. Obviously the bridge priority doesn't have to match from switch to switch. That's to, to elect who's going to be that root bridge. But we can also define the interfaces that we want to participate in MSTP. And if I hit question mark, you could see, you could say, yeah, all interfaces or specific interfaces. We want specific interfaces to be specific, we want Giggy002 to go to switch two and Giggy003 to go to switch three. Now if I just do a quick show, we've now got a little bit more configuration to it. Now what I really like about this is that if I do set MSTI, multiple spanning tree instance one and hit question mark, Note you can now define the interfaces at an instance level when you could define the bridge priority at the instance level. So that means for instance one and instance two, switch one might be the root bridge for instance one, but switch two could be the root bridge for instance two. I'm not gonna do that because as I said, and as I've done, I'm doing everything at the MSTP global level just to keep things nice and simple. Well, that's really granular. That's nice control of that switching network. But for now, I'm just going to do set MSTI1 VLAN. Let's open the brackets for instance one. It is two to 10. Let's close the bracket and let's do set MSTI2 VLAN. Open square bracket, 11 to 20, close. And let's do show. That's it. That is the configuration. How quick and easy is that? Net Academy, revision level, this has to match, this has to match, and the VLAN to instance mapping has to match. But additionally, we've configured the bridge priority to elect who's the root bridge, and the interfaces that are participating in, in MSTP. Let's do a quick commit check, and it succeeds, and I'm just going to commit and quit out of this. And just for speed, it's going to switch to, 
and let's go into the command line interface into configure mode is to edit VLANs oh not edit VLANs then that doesn't mean anything show pipe display set and all the VLANs are there including VLAN 20 it's such an easy command you don't need to see that a second time really but now let's go into edit into top nearly edit interfaces let's do show again I've got no interfaces there so I need giggy 001 to go to switch one this needs to be family ethernet switching interface mode trunk VLAN members 1 to 20 close it off enter and uh, now let's make it giggy 003 let's just show and now I've got my giggy one my giggy one interface to switch one trunk in all VLANs and my giggy three to switch three trunk in all VLANs and now let's just go into top edit protocols MSTP and let's do exactly the same configuration minus the bridge priority so let's do set revision level one set configuration name the underscore net academy let's do set interface giggy 001 to switch one giggy 03 to switch three let's do set bridge priority is 12k and now let's define the instance msti1 vlan square bracket 2 to 10 and set msti2 vlan 11 to 20 close it off let's do a show and that's it so what we should see when I commit this is that yes the spanning tree multiple spanning tree network the protocol starts working and we should see an election process where hopefully switch one becomes the root bridge and we can then start seeing all of those port port rows so let's do a commit and quit so let's go back onto switch one now and let's just do a quick validation command let's do show spanning tree mstp configuration and note here the context identifier now this actually does have to match but you can't configure it i don't know the use of this therefore but it, it's there the net academy that's the name revision level one and this is the configuration digest that's the hash calculation that's outputted and this needs to match from switch one to switch two to switch three and then we've got the instance to vlan mapping instance one vlans two to ten instance two vlans 11 to 20 and then all those non-active vlans vlans 1 and then from 21 up to 4094 are just in that default msti 0 msti 0 is the ist it's automatically configured and created for you and just to prove that if i do show configuration protocols mstp we didn't configure msti 0 did we no we only configured msti 1 and msti 2 yet there is msti zero because it is just created for you and no on all the non-active vlans go into there what's another configuration or validation command you could do show spanning tree interface and you don't have to define show multiple spanning tree because junos just just knows what instance of uh spanning tree you're actually running but you just do show spanning tree interface and let me maximize this a bit more actually so now we can actually see for instance 0, for instance 1, for instance 2, what rows and states are each one of these ports actually in. And that's why I've done that configuration at the global, coming back to it, at this global level within the MSTP. Because if I had done different interface and bridge priorities for MSTI 1 and MSTI 2, you'd be getting a lot of different rows and states here. It would just get too confusing. But what we can actually see is that every single port, giggy 2 and giggy 3, for each instance, instance 1, 2, and 3, are forwarding and designated. And therefore, switch 1 is the root bridge. And just to back this up, another validation command you could do is show spanning tree bridge brief. And what we can see is that the root ID is ending in DAD1. The CIST regional route uh, that's the regional route we'll come on to that but we can see the local bridge ID is DAD1 or ending in DAD1 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 this is the root bridge for MSTI1 DAD1 and for MSTI2 that's DAD1 so switch one is the root bridge for all instances 
And let's actually go on to switch two. Let's run that same command. So let's do show spanning tree interface brief, just to begin with. And now we can see what port is blocking. So we can see the gig E3 for all instances, for instance zero, one, and two is blocking. It's discarding all traffic to prevent a loop. Whereas gig E1, for instance one or zero one two is forwarding and it is the root port and let's go on to switch three let's just get a bit of space and just do show spanning tree interface brief and we can see all of those root ports there so I'm just going to put this onto the lab for you just to make this clear and here we go I've just entered in the port states the rows in the background so what we can see and just as a good summary switch one has become the root bridge and again this is for all instances msti 0 1 and 2 just to keep things simple but we've got designated port on giggy 003 and then we've got designated port on giggy 002 so most definitely switch 1 is that root bridge for all instances but for switch 3 the giggy 001 port is a root port that is the best or lowest cost to get back to the root bridge to get back to switch 1 the Gigi002 port is designated. The Gigi003 port on switch 2 is alternate, which means it's discarding. That is to break the loop in this network. And then the Gigi001 port right here is the root port to get back to that root bridge. That is the glorious switch 1. So that's it. But just to show you a little bit more detail, if I just run some of the same commands again, what you can actually see and let's just go into a little bit more detail to this show spanning tree bridge brief. We can see that this is a, a global instance that is running MSTP. We've got the CIST, that's the common internal spanning tree. I'll come on to this in just a minute. And then we've got instance one and instance two. And we can actually see for each instance, what is the root bridge? So we could see this is from switch one's perspective for each one of these instances it's saying yep the root bridge is ending in this mac address and i have the same mac address and therefore i am that that root bridge we know that but what you can also see is the hello time being default two seconds the maximum age to time out those bpdus are 20 seconds and the four delay by default 15 seconds to transition if needed from the learning state straight into the forwarding state if needed and the amount of topology changes that have happened and the time since the last topology. Are there any other useful SPAT MSTP commands? What you could do just for example is just do show a spanning tree question mark and under MSTP there's nothing else apart from configuration and we, we saw that didn't we? It was where we got the show spanning tree MSTP configuration and it, it just gives this, this digest doesn't it with the net academy. We, we've seen this but are there any other useful validation commands well you can also check the statistics so you could do statistics on the particular bridge and you can see number of stp instances so instance one two when those changes actually happen so yeah a little bit of a little bit interesting in terms of tracking topology changes or you can do it for particular interfaces so Giggy02 and Giggy003, the, the amount of BPDUs that have been sent, received, and the next transmission. Uh, have there been any topology changes? Are there any proposal and agreement? That's RSTP uh, speaking, that's what allows RSTP to converge a lot more quickly. It's what's called the sync mechanism. But yeah, really the top, top level, the best validation show commands are your show spanning tree MSTP configuration and your show spanning tree bridge and you can do brief or you can actually do detail or you can actually go into MSTI and into a particular instance and now I'm actually just viewing instance one and really the same information instead of having all those instances so that's actually very handy if you've got 10 20 or more MSTP instances actually running but here's the thing, what we've now done is we've configured region A and region B is also configured. But we do not have the CST, the common spanning tree actually configured because region A is configured here and it's breaking the loop there. 
and region B is configured here and it's breaking the loop here but we don't have region A talking to region B and vice versa so what we need to do is actually to go back onto switch 2 and back onto switch 3 and configure the CST how do we do that it is quite literally as easy as just adding in these interfaces into the MSTP protocol but question for yourselves what VLANs are actually common between region A and region B so in region A we've got the VLANs 2 to 10 and 11 to 20 in region B we've got VLANs 2 to 10 and VLANs 21 to 30 well VLANs 11 to 20 do not exist in region B and likewise VLANs 21 to 30 do not exist in region A but VLANs 2 to 10 do actually exist in both regions so therefore we also have to configure these interfaces on all on all of these switches to guess what trunk those VLANs across from region A to region B so let's go on to switch 2 and first let's actually configure the GIGI 004 interface that goes to switch 4 in region B so let's do top edit interfaces and let's do set GIGI 004 family ethernet switching interface mode trunk you know this command by now VLAN members 2 to 10 and now I also go to the top edit protocols MSTP and we need to add the GIGI 4 interface into here and if I do a quick command we can now see that interface has been added so now if I just do a quick commit and quit out of here and that's run now switch one doesn't have a boundary interface to region B boundary meaning that it's facing the region that has that CIST route whereas switch three does as does switch two so again let's go into top edit interfaces and we need to create the GIGI 006 interface family ethernet switching interface mode trunk VLAN members 2 to 10 and let's now go into protocols MSTP set interface GIGI 006 and let's do a show on that we can see the GIGI 006 has been entered in and let's commit and quit on that and just for good measure I'm going to go quickly onto switch 4 and verify that this switch is trunking over that interface so let's do show configuration interfaces GIGI 002 and ah oh, it's actually trunking VLAN members 1 so I'll just change that and let's also do the same on switch 6 so let's do show configuration interfaces GIGI 003 to switch 3 in region A and yeah I'll change I'll get rid of the run but that's it so with those interfaces now added into the MSTP protocol ie to allow region A to talk to region B through or via using CST common span entry let's now validate what port state are those interfaces in on switch 2 and switch 3 ie the interfaces facing region B and the command to do that is exactly the same command that we've done so far show spanning tree interface and let's just do brief and note now we have got a little bit more information here now this is for switch 3 as I was saying so obviously this switch right here but now we can see that GIGI 006 interface that we just enabled configured to participate in STP and we could see for this interface going across to region B that it is forwarding yes but it's also the root port and what's interesting as well is if you look at instance one which has those VLANs 2 to 10 that there's also this concept of the master port what that basically means is that this interface here and this interface here they are both what's called the boundary interfaces but this is really for MSTI 0 it's for the default uh, instance that's created for MSTP whereas the master port is for all other instances or so instance one instance two so on and so forth but if I actually scroll down why do you not see a master port here that is obviously up here the reason being is because for instance two there is no tags 
2 to 20 is there no if you actually look down here msti 2 this tags 11 to 20 and that's not over here and thus that there's no master port for instance 2 but what you can see is that for instance 0 which is which is this part here we've got the root port and let's do the same command on switch 2 so my secure CRT shut down so I had to log back in but let's do show spanning tree interface brief and this is the Gigi 004 interface going to switch 4 and we can see that is blocking it's discarding it's an alternate port it's a backup in case the in case the root port actually fails but it is discarding let's go on to switch 4 and we can actually see I've already run the command so the Gigi 002 interface which goes to switch 2 in region A that's forwarding and designated and switch 6 in region B which has the Gigi 003 interface going to region A show spanning tree interface brief here we go Gigi 003 that's forwarding and designated so a bit of information there let me put that on the topology for you and I think this is really cool and interesting from a networking perspective because if we look at it uh, from this is that region A is viewed from region B's perspective as being one big giant logical switch and likewise from region A's perspective region B is also one big logical giant switch and there are these two interfaces going from region A to region B and what is the at the end of the day the, the role of spanning tree or ISDP or MSDP it is to create a loop free topology and that is what's happening here with this alternate port we are discarding any traffic but we're also saying for all switches that are inside region A that if you want to get to any switch inside region B you can use the root port to get from over, over this interface to here to region B these are designated ports this is the root port and thus MSDP more specifically the common spanning tree has created a loop free topology between different regions I think that's really cool but a question for yourselves why was this port elected as the root port and why was this port actually elected as the alternate port why wasn't this elected as the root port the the, the reason being really comes down to this the priority switch three has a priority of eight thousand eight k whatever the actual value is but junos just summarizes it to eight k whereas the priority on switch two was 12k so immediately because of that this port became the alternate port and thus was blocking traffic so it couldn't be a root port at that point and this port became the root port because it had a the chassis the switch had a better priority to get out of this boundary interface across to region b what happens what happens if they've both got the same priority so say this was also 8k well what mstp takes into account is the cost the external cost as it's called to get over from region a to region b so if this was a cost of 20,000, it being a giggy interface from this link to the from this region to region B and 20,000 here as well that's obviously a tie but that would be the next thing it looks at and if that's a tie it then looks at the port identifier and the port priority eventually the better or lower the value in the STP speaking world is just always going to win but right now switch 3 has become that route port to get out of region A over to region B but let's go back to switch 3 on the command line interface and I'm just going to maximize this a little bit more and let's do that show spanning tree not interface no, I didn't want to do that let's do bridge uh, let's do brief and let's look at instance or MSTI 0 so I'm just filtering down on the default instance 0 I don't want to look at instance 1 and 2 it's, it's too big a display now what you can see what's really interesting is note it's saying that the root ID for the CIST ends in 81D1. What is the CIST? Honestly, I can't recall if I've said this yet, but it's the common and internal spanning tree. What that basically means is region A and region B with the CST in the middle, it's it's all together basically. CIST is taking all of this into account. So it's region A plus C CST, the link in the middle, and region B, plus another CST 
region C, so on and so forth. The CIST is basically having a one CIST route for the whole CIST, for all regions, including the CST, and thus is able to determine that loop free topology. And really, which one, which region, region A or region B, is going to be that route bridge, and thus determine again what links are going to be forwarding and what links are actually going to be discarding traffic. But what we can actually see here is that the root ID ends in 81D1. The switch threes bridge identifier is 5DD1. So we know it's not switch three. Let's look at switch one, just for example. Well, that ends in DAD1. That is not ending in 81D1. How about switch two? So let's do show spanning tree bridge brief MSTI zero. That ends in 72D1. So basically, that CIST route that is in charge as such of the whole region and CST in the middle, it's not in region A. So region A has a regional route, but it does not have the CIST route, the regional route being that route bridge for region A. And if we actually come back to switch three, you can actually see that the, C the CIST regional route is 5D D1. Switch 3's MAC address is 5D D1. So now switch 3 is the root bridge for MSTI 0. But wasn't it switch 1? Yes it was. It was switch 1. But if, but if I do that same command on switch 1, it is also now saying that the regional route is 5D D1. Whereas I am DAD1 in terms of MAC address. Why is that? when it's got a lower priority of 4K versus the priority of 8K on Switch 3. It's because Switch 1 doesn't have a boundary interface, doesn't have an interface connecting from region A to region B. And because Switch 2 and Switch 3 only have those interfaces, have those boundary interfaces, Switch 3 has become that regional route because it has the better, i.e. lower priority. But coming back to it, who is this 81D1? Well, if I go over to Switch 6, and I'm just going to answer the question now let's do show spanning tree bridge brief msti 0 8 1 d 1 so switch 6 is both the regional route it's the route bridge for region b but it is also the route bridge for the cist it's the cist route why is that again it comes down to this priority this switch 6 has a priority of 0, switch 3 has a priority of 3, switch 3 has become the root bridge for region A, switch 6 has become the re regional bridge for region B, but because it's also got this lower priority, it has also then become the CIST route for the whole region, and again, that spans across from region A to region B, including this in the middle. Very interesting when you actually start putting that theory into practice. So that's it, everybody. That is the end of this video. That is the end of this part in multiple spanning tree protocol. As always, I hope you found that useful. I hope you found that informative. It is just designed, this video is just designed to be a quick illustrative guide a guide only into how how to configure mstp in your network and it was very straightforward wasn't it create your vlans trunk those vlans over those interfaces and then configure mstp within the edit protocols field now what i did was to find everything at a global level i everything all instances had that same bridge priority and all instances were using the same interfaces because otherwise it would have got too complex for this video. But then once we've done that configuration and we configured those switches in region A to have the same revision level, to have the same configuration name and the VLAN to instance mapping, they outputted that hash digest, didn't they? And they all became region A. And we went through some interesting validation commands to view. First, is spanning tree up and running in region A? Are these switches actually speaking to each other? What switches are in a root port? Or what switch is the root bridge? What are the root ports? What are the designated ports? Which port is actually discarding traffic? 
And then we went a step further and actually validated when we add those interfaces to connect region A to region B, how can you validate what interfaces between those two regions are root port, designator ports, and discarding. And ultimately at the end, when you've got this multi-region MSDP network, how are you going to identify what is that CIST route? So as I said, a lot of information, but just a quick guide into how to configure and validate MSTP. Now, as always, as I said, hope you found that useful and informative. Any questions or comments, let me know down in the comments box. I love hearing from you all. Other than that, thanks for watching and goodbye.